Anyway, you can see on the screen here. So basically, this is all about doing uh, 3D printing, but using Snap. Um, now, I've got myself a new 3D printer, and um, I wanted to be able to produce objects. And the program I use for building stuff is Tinkercad, which is a very easy to use program. Um, but I ended up wanting to produce these bins called grid infinity bins. But parametrically, I wanted to be able to change the wall size and stuff like that. And um, you can't do that directly in Tinkercad, but it has a sort of companion uh, program called Code Blocks. Um, and this is Code Blocks. It's basically, it's it's a blockly based language. So it's horrible. I don't like blockly. But, you know, you can do things like this. You can, um, I need to get rid of my screen. Hide thumbnail video, yes. So you've got a block there. If you want to add a cube, you press play over here and the cube is just made. And you, you can modify it. You can put move here and you can say move it up 20. And then if you run it again, and it all animates nicely. So I set, I set to work on this and I came up with this to do my, my grid infinity bin. Um, and let's set that away. And you should see it building up here. So I have to work out how could you put this bin together and it's all to do with wedge shapes and upside down cones in the corner and just normal little round things. It's very nice, they say, uh, code blocks in terms of, you know, obviously the animation here looks very good and it shows it building through, but the actual code itself, it just ends up as one long block. And it's, as you can see, it's blockly. And we're not blockly people, we're scratch snap people, aren't we? So that was it. Anyway, so I managed to produce one base here, one grid infinity base. But then what I wanted to do was say have something four times the size and I needed to duplicate the bin and then I found out that I'd hit a limit of 200 somethings in in um, in code blocks here so I couldn't proceed any further and I thought oh that's a shame and then I thought um hang on and I don't know what it was some light bulb moment come out that I knew that there was a scripting uh, 3D language called OpenSCAD, which is just a text-based scripting. You know, if you want to do a cube, you make a cube size 18, it'll just do a cube 18. Or you can tell it that you want to make different sizes down here. That you can use, you know, produce a cuboid and not a cube. And that's great. And then I thought, yeah, in Snap, there's something called code of occasion, isn't there, that I've never really used. But the, the young snappers are very keen on it. Um, and I went looking because I'd never bothered with I was never I was never interested in this codification because I just want to stay in blocks. But if you go into if you open up a project and sort of if you go into examples, you'll see the codification project. And um, what is there's just a limited number of snap blocks over the left here. So, you know, they've hidden away and only left the ones that could be transcoded into different languages. And the way this works is there you are. You look at that, this code here, this FizzBuzz script, standard scratch. You can just run it and it'll run just like normal scratch, which is great. Um, but the trick with it, is to stick it in here, set your script to that's those blocks. And if you scroll down in here, you'll see these ones at the bottom that um, you can map to JavaScript, you can map to Smalltalk, you can map to Python. So if I click on map to JavaScript, that code, if you can see it over on the right there, um, is JavaScript code. The equivalent of FizzBuzz. Um, 
And if you want to see what it's like in Python, there it is in Python, or C, or even Smalltalk, for those who can understand Smalltalk. Only the very clever people can understand Smalltalk. So that was that. Um, and I thought, right, well, you know, I've got to dive in on this and uh, work out how to do it. And if you go into the map to JavaScript, for instance, block, you'll see it just has these map blocks where each block on the in the uh, palette is mapped. So, for instance, main just echoes. This means parameter one. Parameter one is whatever's inside the uh, C block here, so it just does it. It's easier to see the, um, the if statement here. So it says if parameter one, that's parameter one, then do parameter two. And it just outputs this text code. Um, and that's all it does. But obviously that is valid JavaScript, so for instance. So that'd be fine. Report gets mapped to return. Why the for loop there, that's when you get into complications because a for loop in JavaScript is a, you know, not quite as easy to do as in Snap, but there you are, it's all done. But all the simple stuff, the plus, the minuses, the times, the divides, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's quite simple to do it. Um, so then I set off to do it. So let's cancel that. And I came up with my own code. Let's see where it is. Here we are. That looks a bit complicated. Right. So um, I sort of tidied it up and changed it around, but generally the same. Yeah, you can see it's press space bar, generate an open SCAD script, um, add a colored object, a cylinder. This is to make a rocket. So you've got a body height and a rocket radius. Then you want to add the nose cone. So we want to make a cone with a cone height and a rocket radius, but obviously we want to move it up to put the cone on the top. And then you want the clever bit with the fins on the side. So you make up one fin, move it out to the edge and then rotate it round, and you can uh, do it that way. So now one of the things is I found there was a block so I could easily, um, the original codification I should have said, relies on the fact that you right click on your code and you export it. And then it'll export it as code.txt. You know, um, now you can change this, um, but it's a bit awkward to use. So basically I found somebody's JavaScript block um, that lets it dead easy to save. So I can just click on that. It's the only, it's just saving. It's just cutting out a lot of the things. So when I press on my space bar, uh, it automatically generates a file called snap underscore and the name of the sprite dot SCAD. So I can save that. Just overwrite my previous one because I've obviously already done it. And there we go. And if we open up OpenSCAD, oh, why can't I get rid of these blocks? They're in my way. Oh, I know I can get it up there. So if I file, Open file. Come on, same. Uh, rocket. There we go. There we have the rocket. Um, as you can see, so there's the body, the code on top, and the four fins. Now, this was all great, but then the the really good thing I found out about it because it's obviously doing this and then opening up the file is a bit you know you want it like something a bit smoother so if we just make the rocket five and press the space key and save it again and overwrite it if you go to open scad open scad has this great thing that they it updates live so i mean if you you know if you if i actually sort of minimize my scratch screen my snap screen and just have the open scan on the right any changes i make i can press it save it and it updates on the right but i just have to click on the bottom here so basically as long as you save it there's the same file and it changes open scan notices it changes and it's sort of giving you 
a preview, um, not quite, you know, fully live, but pretty damn good. So, um, yeah. So at the end of the day, um, you go through, let's do this one. Uh, this is a house here. And I'll save that as Snap House. Do, 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 do. And go in here, file, open file. And there we are. Oops, we've got a little house to do things like that. Um, now, the advanced stuff, uh, that was all good and everything. And you can see here, add a coloured object cube is fairly simple. Add a coloured object, a roof, and move it. I made up all the equivalent blocks here to transcribe, you know, cubes, cylinders, cones, wedges, things like that. Um, but when you get into something like a, you want to then use a reuse a module, um, I decided to try and come up with this system where you could define a module called house. And then in the OpenSCAD script, it would import that module house. And I was very pleased. I mean, I'm, I'm just playing around with all this. Um, but the basic thing was I then used the, you know, the macro ability, the scripting ability of, of the new scratch blocks to be able to go and find a defined module on a script and then take this code that's inside here and automatically put it in. So this is exactly the same as just put, you know, putting putting that code into there um, and playing around with it. So I then went down a route of other things, whereas here's the same one. I wanted to define a soft box of soft boxes. You know, you can just decide how thick are the walls, whether it's got a, a floor or anything like that. So there's one, the first way of doing it, which is define a soft box. And within the definition, there's a soft box shape, and then there's the box. And you can import that box, and then you can add a module soft box. The problem with that is you've got to know what all the parameters are. So X, Y, Z, wall thickness. Um, whether it's got X, I'm all right. You see, I'm all right, it's corner radius. I even confuse myself. X, Y, Z, corner radius, um, wall thickness, whether it has a floor, and then whether you want to move it. Right. So then I made it that you could define your own blocks and have a proper scratch block, uh, snap block, and then work out how to import that as well. So... Uh, I'm not reading this, the chat, by the way. I can't, can't, I'm a bloke. I can't do two things at once. Um, so import module definition. Yeah. So let's just go to my grid infinity at the very end here. And there was the one that wanted to make my grid infinity box, which has got a definition of a single bin base. And then you want to have an actual bin. And then you want to actually, how many bins do you want to uh, to print out? And this takes a little bit of a while here to run. And um, so I won't actually demonstrate that. I wanted to keep the time and get us all back on track here. So I'm now going to look at the chat and um, see what it is and see if I can answer anybody's questions. So let's just come out of screen share. How do I do that? Stop share. Right, out the screen share, let's look at the chat. 